Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to you one and all. This is Little Daffodil, and today we're doing something a little bit different. A little bit different, we are adding a little something to our Who What section of the channel. The Who What section is a chance for me to natter on about whatever I want because I want because I can. Because that's the whole point of the whole channel. <laughs> today, I'm going on about the fact that Doctor Who, the Doctor, the Eternal Doctor, is now to be played by a woman. Now let me start by making this very clear. I'm okay with this. I am okay with the doctor being a female. I don't have a problem with it. But I've talked to people who do. One of the first people I spoke to who had a problem with it is actually a woman. She admits there have been very strong and wonderful female characters in the show from the beginning all the way through to now. She has no problem with female characters. Her problem, oddly enough, is that she just wants one constant. She wants something to remain the same. But you know, I think after 50 plus years, the doctor has been proven to always be about change, to always be about exploration. It's a science fiction show. It is not supposed to be constant. So when she and I spoke, I made the following case. I said, I understand that when you have a beloved actor playing the character written to your perfect ideal, <clears throat> number four, you don't want to let them go. You don't want to watch them change. You want to keep them forever as they are so you can continue to enjoy the story arcs and the character development and the companions that have been there as you've watched. And the woman I'm talking about who has this problem, she has been watching it her whole life. She's like me. She watched it as a kid. I grew up on the Tom Baker Doctor. I found the prior Doctors later. I've seen all of them, as much as I can get my hands on anyway, including the disastrous 1990s movie, just don't even go there with that one, I gotta say. Um, but I just had to make the case to her that change is the center of Doctor Who. Change is a constant, if there is one. And you should not be afraid of change. For me, the biggest change in Doctor Who is not the changing actors. Um... Not even the speed with which the companions can change. For me, the biggest change has been how the reboot rebooted the whole thing into a whole different idea. And what I mean by that is when Doctor Who first came out, it was a science fiction show. It was centered on science fiction, exploration, the unexpected, the unknown. You were off Earth, but even when you were on Earth, when he was stuck on Earth for years... It was about the extraordinary. It was about whatever your imagination could come up with. There were long story arcs. The doctor stuck around for a long time. Not always long enough, but a long time. And that's changed. That is what I miss. That is what's gone for me. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy the modern version of the doctor. But it's not the same. And I think the, the arc where Matt Smith... Um, his version of the Doctor, and the way they were writing that character, you know, they've turned him into a goofy young guy, and, but he was still a little alien, and the long story arc with the Amy Pond character as best friend, like Sarah Jane Smith was a best friend, um, and a long story arc that looped in some short-term stories, but always went back to the long-term story, and and went over several seasons. That was the closest for me to what it used to be. And it is my hope that they will get back there. That they will stop trying to turn the Doctor into a modern, humanized, action-adventure hero that we should all drool over. Because to me, that's not what he is. He's, he, he's fantastical. He's an alien. And we shouldn't understand him. And he's slightly snooty and he's annoying and is annoyed. And, you know, it's, it's just the doctor. Be female, be male, be whatever. But be alien. And the stories 
should not be predictable and somewhat canned, uh, which in many ways they are. I know that something's going to go wrong and he's going to fix it. I don't know how he's going to fix it. And I really get annoyed when they do it really, really fast, all in one episode, one episode. It's broken, then it's fixed by the end of the episode. Get more in depth. Be a little more adventurous. This is what can happen now that they've brought in something so radically different that it's not just another metamorphosis from a guy to a guy. We've changed hairdos. We've done more than change hairdos. We've changed everything. And that is what Doctor Who is about. Don't think in the box. Don't confine yourself to the box. Go out into the universe. Explore it. See what's there. Yes, there always has to be an adventure and a story to keep the audience enticed, but it, it doesn't have to be a running adventure that you may as well put a gun in his hand because he's he's using other things as weapons anyway. Let's make him the healer again, fully and truly. So ultimately, I encourage you all not to worry. Don't worry if it's a male or a female doctor. Remember, the doctor is an alien. An alien from a time and a place that we do not understand. Enjoy that. Enjoy that. And hopefully all this change <clears throat> will bring us to new places, new heights, new adventures, and new ways of thinking that don't even understand that there should be a box anywhere involved in it at all. Now, a couple of pieces of advice for those of you who may or may not have seen a lot of Doctor Who. If you've never seen the original series all the way back uh, to the very first Doctor played by William Hartnell, I highly recommend you watch whatever you can. You'll notice the biggest thing is that the Doctor changes mm, a lot based on the time period in which the Doctor episodes were written and recorded. So that's why by the time you get to Sylvester McCoy in the late 80s, the costumes are bright primary colors. Um, there have been a couple of movies made over the years. I highly recommend that you skip the 1996 release. Um, you know, Paul McGann did great in the short where he transitioned into the War Doctor. And honestly, I think he did a good job in the movie, but the movie was just, in my personal opinion, absolutely horrible. Uh, the 1960s movies with Peter Cushing, they're quite good. They, they really are. I actually got a chance to rewatch them recently and uh, was thrilled to do so. Thrilled. They were just really good. Um, and again, watch watch the old stuff, folks. William Hartnell was the original. He was crotchety and grouchy and he was a grandfather. And, you know, you just, you, you just, you had to love him or hate him, but you couldn't stop watching him. Uh, Patrick Troughton, he brought the comedy element in a little bit more, you know, a little younger, a little bit more energy, a little bit more whimsy. John Pertwee was, you know, the metrosexual male of his generation with his karate chops. And then Tom Baker brought in a little more alien, a little more aloofness, and a little more snut. Uh, Peter Davidson, uh, one of my favorites, always liked him. Just a refinedness to the character that, that had not been there before. Colin Baker was an angry one. I think a lot of the problems there were just the the writing. That was one time when the writing really let us down. I think they just made the doctor too angry. Instead of being snobby and above everything, he was just angry. Sylvester McCoy brought back the whimsy. I enjoyed him. His companion, his main companion, Ace. I was very, very sad to see it go, but I understood why at the time it just wasn't resonating with audiences. So I was really happy when they brought it back um, with Christopher Eccleston. Not sure I love the fact that he came back uh, so angry and so war-torn. Uh, that's a lot to take in. But uh, the new run with all of them, I recommend it. If you're going to watch them, folks, watch them all. And that's it for me. That's my ramble on the doctor being a woman. Because to me, the doctor isn't a man or a woman. The doctor is an alien. And if the story is good, I'm going to watch it. I recommend you do 
as well.